What's up everybody? Farmer Ben from Den Hill Farm and Fungi and I wanted to do a follow-up video on the cordyceps, cordyceps mil militaris, and we've been growing them in the bags for two years now, two seasons, um, and we wanted to go over our experiments with trying different media. We started out just using brown rice and found out that finding 50 pound bags of organic or regular brown rice is kind of hard to do. So we've been playing with new strains and new varieties uh, of media and I kind of wanted to show you all the results. All right, so this is gonna be hard to document in the bags. I don't know, I think uh, in the shade looks better there. But this is the Hades strain from Appalachian Gold and um, that is on brown rice and sorghum and it seems to be doing quite well you can see there's a lot of fruiting bodies that's like everywhere in the bag pretty much continuous um, and then we go on to here which is millet straight millet um, and the straight millet um, while it is fruiting it's not as dense as the others so um, I feel like the millet is okay it's actually Japanese millet not um, the white pearl millet. Um, and then this is um, straight wheat, which I read some doc, um, like a journal document on um, using wheat as, I guess spawn is what they were um, citing, was very productive as spawn. We just go LC directly into the media so we don't use spawn um, and it does not seem to be doing as well. Um, it's hard to get a picture in there, but it's like the, the rice and millet is like pretty much like the rice. Um, and then straight sorghum, it's not as good as the rice and millet. Still have decent formations. These are all inoculated at the same time of 12.5 and they're all the same strain. Or the Hades, um, that label is wrong. Um, it's just straight Hades. Um, and so, yeah, this is uh, rice and millet. Oh, oh man. <clears throat> but it seems to be doing really well. It seems like the combination with rice and the small grains um, is doing quite well. Um, this one, on the other hand, is straight wheat. While they might be good for spawn, but that's not been the case with fruiting. Those look like the worst. We also used oats last year and we did not have very good yields from the oats, but it was at the end of the year, so we should probably try it again because it was just starting to get a little hot. In summary, the performance of rice far exceeds with our experiments the other media, but mixing in rice with other small grains like sorghum or millet seem to be producing quite well. We're gonna keep experimenting um, and we're gonna have some harvest videos coming up along with weight uh, yields of the harvest so we can have some firm data to compare uh, the different media and different strains. We have some new strains this year that I'm not that familiar with. Some of them are just cranking out these huge cordyceps so it's kind of hard to compare um, and see, like they have less, but they're huge versus tons of little ones. So it's gonna be interesting to see how things shake out, but we love doing it and we're gonna keep on plugging away and sharing what we find out because there's nothing out there. Um, and so these are now using the long patch unicorn bags for better airflow and it seems to be working great. Um, and we will keep you posted with more information. Freshly inoculated Cordycep LC from yesterday. We'll be using this to knock um, 12 bags, two autoclave full um, of these production bags, long patch um, unicorn bags uh, later this week. All right, this is our 12 set of inoc inoculated set bags in the long patch. This is another grain trial of the Japanese millet and brown rice together. 
So we'll see how that goes. Then we have to smash the crap out of them and form them into the cakes and cover them up for a week. Now we're gonna check out our harvest. This is the sorghum at 11 and a half weeks. It's a few weeks past uh, ideal harvest. The wheat here, um, the worst of all of our trials and you can see the heat stress. Um, we're gonna talk about that later. And I think time also, I took a vacation and farmers can't take vacations. But yeah, the wheat had the lowest yield of three quarters of a pound. Rice is still number one, seems to be producing the best. Like I said, the heat stress sucks, but um, we've figured out a solution to that problem. Those have great harvests, the rice. So we are working on currently testing a more blended trifecta. So this is a new strain cross that uh, we got from Appalachian Gold and it is insane how big they are and how sticky they were. I'm still trying to figure out if I can see the nodules on there. I don't know, I don't know, um, it's so weird, but we are going ahead and processing that for this batch of medicinals. We'll see what happens. If you've made it this far and like nerding out, don't forget to like and subscribe. So everything is picked and ready for medicinal processing. We got them in the autoclave buckets. So now we'll pressure cook that and make it bioavailable uh, for our medicinal powders comparable to an alcohol extraction but we grind it up blend it to get all the nutrients into the powder now on to our do-it-yourself cool bot with temperature controllers where you use a light to trick the ac sensor and the heat cooling below the minimum and it has allowed us to keep our lab below 68 and we are trying to produce cordyceps year round now. And so every other week we are gonna be doing a batch and that should provide us enough space with a little bit of overflow there. And <clears throat> yeah, the, the daisy chain. So if the unit starts to freeze, the second unit kills the first temperature controller and allows it to go back into defrost. And that's like my ghetto vent there. I know you shouldn't, use window units in labs but i don't have central air i'm going to be working on a full analysis of our harvest and data on best grain trials and combinations so stay tuned for more nerdy information